Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, so he, he took an upset kind of early, winner's quarters final, which is not where we expected. What was Jen seated today? Can I ask that? Uh, numbers. Fourth? Third? Fifth? Something like that. In my heart, right. he was number one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which one? Probably. Yeah, okay. Either way, we're going to get into game one. Buckle in, Hangman, because I have a feeling... Well, actually, I don't know how Jen's going to play this. I felt like, you know, we kind of saw a little mix of, you know, from Odyssey, got a little aggressive at points. For the most part, he found the most success when he was just chilling and waiting and not letting Sinji control and dominate the matchup with his uh, bonus fruit items. Now, I brought this up earlier about how all the Politanas in New York have different styles of play. And from Jen, I think it's just the fact that he's just unshaken with when he wants to end out of stock. Like, he may not have the fanciest of movement, as we don't see too many teleport cancels from him. Jen? Yeah. Okay. Um, he may not be as, like, aggressive as Ray, and we know this just from the lack of down airs and random smashes, and it's like, even though Ray calculates it all, like, it's still just, like, with demonic aggression. Jen, sort of, you get the best of both worlds, because he always seems like he's ready to <laughs> do something to throw you off balance. But, ooh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like he could have gone for a, maybe charge on a forward smash or something, but I think he just took the safe option where he's like, I'm going to take the damage. I don't want to, you know, if it doesn't connect with him, I don't want to be stuck charging a smash. But now we're seeing Jen retaliating. See what he does. He's getting aggressive off stage, which is something we really didn't see, you know, from Odyssey, which I respect because Pac Man, he's really hard to hit off stage. He has a couple different options to mix it up and a lot of active hitboxes, too. Oh, yeah, he's a weasel of a character, man. This character has so many options for moving around off stage. And, like, he's not too concerned about getting back to the stage, as you can see from Side B bringing him out deep. But you got to be ready to to try and contest it. It's still back, man. That's right. Yeah, I mean, Jen doing I mean, and I like it because Jen's showing that option early. So, like, through a long set, you got to win two sets against Sinji. You're going to have to mix it up at some point. So he's showing his hand early with the uh, offense or with the aggression off stage. I'd like to see how he mixes it up, though. I mean, sometimes he's going to want to set up at the ledge or try to catch Sinji or recovering high or something like that. Like, there's a lot of time to go in this set. It, we have the potential to go into a game of 10. Uh, but sure. if we're going to get there, it's going to be from uh, from Jen having to reset. The, but I don't really know if we're going to get there, to be honest with you. Sinji's played very well at, against the current meta, I would say. His As usual, right? has, like, it would stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. Like, even though he's learning what his tools do differently now, and he's adjusting to a lot of changes around Pac-Man, like, he's still so assured of what he can do with Pac-Man. He's so... He believes in this character so hard, and he it really comes through in his play. Uh, yeah, Sinji's Pac-Man withstanding the test of time, unlike the real Pac-Man in real life, uh, only having one good game. That's it. Oh, that's well, Miss Pac-Man was good, too. Uh, oh, well, that's Miss Pac-Man. That's her own game. See what I'm saying? Miss Pac-Man not being an Echo Fighter or a skin for Pac-Man still Weird. makes me tired. Yeah, should be in that, but either case, Bell, good recovery from Jen. Okay, run up and grab. All right, I like it. The down throw, too. All right, Pac-Man, you do you. I also like how he put the bell away there. He tried to use it again later on, but uh, one of the new features about Pac-Man that we highlighted a little bit earlier into the stream was uh, what a lot of Pac players are calling recycling, where you can grab the fruit and you can charge it again and bring it out as something stronger. So like you're constantly holding onto the bell, but then if need be, just recharge that into the key. Definitely. I mean, it works for the lower level or the earlier stage items too. You know, you can you can really mix it up for sure. Here's a question. You might not know the answer, and that's okay because I definitely don't. Can you do bell, re-grab the bell while they're stunned, and charge it into a key and hit them with it? That uh, sounds cool. I don't know if you have enough frames to do it though. It sounds sick, but there's not enough stun on the bell. Okay, gotcha. Like cool. the time that it takes to re-grab it, then charge it, and then throw it. By that point, the opponent's going to be flying from whichever direction that they get hit with the bell. True. Like, most, more often than not, we're seeing Sinji respond to the uh, the bell with up smash, and the mix-up tends to be forward smash. I've yet to see him land down smash, but the idea is that he's got them stunned. He just wants them off the board. Whether it's going to kill or not right. is not as important, but the fact that they're off stage eating tons of damage is what matters the most. Good use of the hydrant there, catching the teleport. That's where you got to hit Palo when she's trying to recover. Okay, oh, that's going to be all it. Yeah, yeah. that is going to be it. Okay. That was a little bit of interesting, yeah, yeah, interesting. Well, because well, he's running up, you know he's going to charge a smash, so I feel like you might be preemptively DIing for the uh, forward smash, but he came out. It's kind of hard to see what he's doing with all the crap flying in the way. Like the hydrant was there, the fruit, like all that stuff was kind of uh, optical interference. Yeah, you're going to get that often. There's there's a lot that's going on, especially with Palutena and Pac Man. There's a lot of particles on the screen. Yep. That is super true. 
But we're going to be going into game two. And so Jen is one of these guys that switches his costume after every game. Is that it? He's just feeling the palettes, man. Like You brought it up first. Palettes had an amazing colors. That's like super ritzy. Like you wear a dress once and then you just throw it away. You know, and you, you move on to the next one. You just buy another one. That's what you do. Yeah. Jen's, Jen's Palutena, super ritzy is what I have to say about it. Like she, she got that money. That's true. What's wrong with this one? She's got the sh money. Here we go, though. Game two onto Smashville. Now, I find this to be an interesting choice just because we haven't seen it picked into too often, but there's a lot less space here to contest. And I feel like that's the important part. Jen can fight for this space a little bit easier, but on the same foot, Sinji can control a lot more space with his traps. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as I said earlier, I play Belmonts, and I kind of actually like the stage because if, I, I'm, if I'm hiding underneath that platform, underneath the dead center still platform, I'm controlling so much space. Like, I can turn to either side, down smash, almost it. It looks like Sinji's going to be doing the same here. Controlling the center space. Just chilling. He's he's winning right now. Trying to catch him in his movement too. Nice try by Sinji, but Jen just a little too fast. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of the trampoline and the fire hydrant sitting just outside the space between the platform and the ledge. Just because those are going to control a lot of where Jen is allowed to move. Between the fire hydrant just being in the way. Not even the water or the fact that it could potentially be a hitbox. Like, it's just going to be in the way of a lot of moving. But speaking about it being a hitbox, that's what's going to be taking the first stop. Yeah, the timing there from Sinji Super Clutch. I like how he used, too, like the way he broke down the hydrant, ending it with the up, up air. Really good positioning of that. And here we go. Sinji, look at the combos right now. 60%. I mean, don't let him fool you. I know Sinji plays super patiently a lot. But that's when he gets an opening, man, he really makes a count. 79% already on Jen. Yeah, his combo game is nuts. And even though we goof on Sinji for being like a really patient player, playing sure. a really campy character, like he still has that New York fire in him. His sure. combo game is unmatched. That's right. And that's the thing too, is like I was saying it earlier, like you really gotta play to the strengths of your character though. Pac-Man's not a brawler. Like he does not want to really get in. He wants to set up and do like set up from far away and play nice and safe. And Sinji's doing it optimally. Gotta give him credit, man. He's making it work with the character that a lot of people really wrote off. You know, in the beginning of Ultimate, even all throughout Smash 4, he's really up to proving people wrong. No matter what it took, you gotta respect that. Like, Pac-Man's one of the few characters in the cast who can really get away with defensive options, and that's just because a lot of his kit surpasses what the mechanics of the game are allowing you. Where a lot of characters lost their out-of-shield options, or being able to have a really strong anti-shield oh, oh, game. Oh, oh, okay, God. Jen, okay. Jen firing back there, sending the Fire Hydrant back, extinguishing the Pac-Man, but... Sinji, I mean, dude, there's one person I really don't want to have to fight back against with a whole stock lead. It is Sinji, man. Like, it's just going to take forever. You have to land so many combos. Pac-Man has so many good combo breakers. He doesn't have a an, a recovery you can intercept very easily. Like, it's, you just know you got to work for your stocks against Pac-Man, though. Yeah, Pac-Man as a whole is a character that you really need to hit the notes on if you want to know what you're fighting. Like, regardless of the fact that if you're fighting Sinji and, like, having to deal with his combos, knowing what he's capable of with whichever fruit, like, there's just so much that's going on you got to keep in mind and knowing how to deal with it properly. And to Jen's credit, he's been, he's been trying well. It's just ending out the stocks has been a struggle. And I feel like that's just because... <gasps> There you go. That's how he challenged Pac-Man on his way back. Good interception by Jen there. Putting himself right back into this game. Kind of need my words there, too. Uh, Jen getting a little overzealous. Running into the grab instead. See if we can find. Turn around, Bell. Forward smash. Pac-Man looking super serious. His eyeballs turning into himself. Taking that game two down. Sinji in prime position to take down this tournament. Jen in quite the hole right now. He's going to have to dig himself out. If Jen wants to win this tournament, he's going to have to win the first three games, reset the bracket, win three get, himself, get himself another, and not let Sinji have any opportunity to take things back. So, yeah, if he wants to do this, we're looking at, let's say, okay, let's say, wait a minute. We're seeing a secondary. We're seeing, I like it. What? I like it. Wario? Sinji has proven a lot of things today, but one thing he has proven for sure is that he can hang with really high-level Palutenos. It looks like Jen... Has been working on a character on the side. It's going to be the Wario. He's going to try to use the air acceleration and movement combo potential of this character. We've seen a lot of top, top tier players do really good things with this character. We're going to see what Jen can do now, too. Like, we got a chance to see Wario a little bit earlier in today's Ooh. stream. And it's a character that, you know, New York's not unfamiliar with. Um, but definitely a character that the spotlight's a lot more focused on thanks to the likes of Tweak and Glutes on a... But seeing Jen pick it out is a very strange choice just because it doesn't seem like a lot of his tools are like signature of Jen's style. But well, to the same time, this is a character that finds himself really comfortable pressuring in the air. Yeah. And 
more importantly than not, I feel there's very reliable kills. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, if you're going to be playing a long game against Pac-Man, Wario has a mechanic for Waft where you could potentially get off two good Wafts in a set if you're playing as Pac-Man and the timer's running down. It's definitely very possible, so I, I like this counter pick. Jen already doing a pretty decent job with it. I mean, considering it's a secondary against Sinji's character he's been playing for 30 years or whatever. I don't know. However, <laughs> however long he's been playing Pac-Man. Just like that, Jen right into this game. Wario also a heavy character too, so Sinji's going to be working a little harder for his KOs as well. I feel like another thing to take into consideration is the fact that Chomp is going to give an extra le uh, layer of defense for Jen. Not only is he going to be able to break through a lot of Sinji's own defenses, but he can use that to eat the bonus fruit and to eat the fire hydrant. Not unable to eat that bell, though. Uh, Sinji ringing Jen's bell right there, taking the first stock. The thing, too, is like... Wario, I feel like, like I like the way Jen went for the WAP there because he's going to get another one, maybe two, if he uses them you know, at that amount of time. So it's just a good idea from Jen. Here we go, trying to set up at the ledge himself. All right, I like how Jen was confident in just going for that up tilt to end Ooh, up the up there. Nice. I haven't seen that kill yet. That's, that's a bit of a weird one. But uh, what I was going to say is Jen was very specific about what move he wanted to break Fire Hydrant with because of the way that it was going to set. We saw that the up tilt started dangling the fire hydrant. It's just a matter of knowing what your offenses can do against a character's tools, and it seems like Jen has a very good idea of what Wario's going to be capable of against uh, Pac-Man. I gotta give a shout-out to that Galaga combo and set up off stage. Sinji turned around, grabbed it, uh, and then turned around and threw it right at Jen. Racked up so much damage. That was super nice. Um, I don't know, man. This one, this one's looking tough for my man Jen. He's going to reach. Yeah. Yes, it is. He is down to his last stock of this tournament, potentially. This is what I'm talking about. This is what he did last time. Look at that. Even though the combo doesn't hit, he cleared a clear path back to the ledge for himself. It's just really smart from Sinji. Just really, really innovative, good Pac-Man play that we're seeing from him. Just making his character as airtight as possible. Like, it goes without si that saying, but when Sinji's feeling himself, when he's, like, knowing what he's able to set up with and with how confident he's able to set up the traps, it's intense to fight him. That's like the best way to describe it, because you can you can joke on Pac-Man all you want. You can figure that he's a really weird character. You can't be certain what you're fighting. But Sinji knows what he's playing with. He knows what he's capable of. Right. And he plays with that level of confidence. He knows that you could just go all in with Pac-Man sometimes. And it seems like Jen's got to figure out the matchup as he goes with a character that he's not nearly as familiar with. Right. Meanwhile, Sinji doesn't care what he's fighting. It could be meta threats all day. It could be other awkward characters. He knows that he's sticking to Pac-Man and he's just going to let it rock. I mean, both these characters are kind of seeing a mini renaissance of themselves from Smash 4. I mean, Wario, obviously, you already said Tweak. Oh, hold on. Not for the Hydrant. Tweak and uh, Gluttony. Down air, though, going all the way down there. Very nice stuff. Able to make it back with the bike and the up B, uh, was ready to go as well. But we're also seeing, you know, Sinji, obviously, you know, probably the most well known Pac Man, but also T. Pac Man got second place. Uh, which tournament was that? Was that, uh, was that Umabora? Sure, either way. T got second as well uh, this weekend with Pac-Man in a very stacked bracket. So, I mean, this character, who knows, man? We might see more uh, Pac-Man come out of the woodwork, and that key is going to seal it out. Sinji locking the door on that last stock, closing out the tournament, 3-0 over Jen. Very well played. I like Jen's idea going with the Wario. Like you said, like, Chomp is just a good tool in that matchup. I feel like it's just a good approaching tool because Pac-Man likes to set up the Hydrant. You jump over it, and you have an aerial command grab with Chomp, but... That's it for us today, man. Yeah, it's, it's been a really fun bracket for us. Doubles was exciting. Singles has been, I feel, very interesting to see just because New York's known for having a good amount of character variety. But I feel like we saw a lot of that sort of boiled down. I know, I know you're giving me a look because Holland Santa was very much here. Oh, no. It's, never mind. It was